Shreveport Bossier, a podcast that showcases the good things happening in our community. My name is Jeff Blindfor. This is my co-host, Paul Reiser. He pronounces his name incorrectly. It should be Reiser, but it's actually Reiser. Come on. <laughs> he's the former president of the Reiser Group and the Sonic Management Company, and he's a member of the Committee of 100. He's a board member there, and every week we're going to be focusing on economic development, community growth, and other topics about initiatives having a positive impact on our community. And we'll have new episodes every other Wednesday. You'll be able to find Good to Know wherever you listen to your podcasts. And our guest today is Mr. Kevin Preston. He's the new president and owner of Louisiana Downs, founder and president of the premier gaming group of Magnolia Bluffs uh, Casino and Hotel in Natchez, Mississippi. And uh, Kevin, welcome to uh, the show. And uh, I guess you just purchased Louisiana Downs a little earlier this year. So uh, kind of go into what brought you to making that buy. Well, first of all, thank you guys for having me. Obviously, uh, this, is a, this is a great opportunity to sort of showcase some of the things that we're doing down at Louisiana Downs and, and be with you guys. And, and again, uh, just appreciate the time. Uh, this is, it's great to do these types of things and, and really Absolutely. appreciate uh, your guys' time. You know, um, I think the big thing for us going into it was, you know, looking at, at the growth aspect. And, and once I visited Louisiana Downs and really got a feel for the team members there, uh, some of which have been there 20, 30, 40 years. And then, you know, slowly saw that that there was much needed capital that needed to be infused into the property. And, and, and just a lot of things were not done over the course of the years. And I thought that, you know, what a tremendous opportunity to come in, a lot of low hanging fruit, but yet you've got a team that's completely engaged and, and want to see this thing succeed again. And, you know, the stories, as I'm sure you guys know from being there, of, you know, in the heyday of the 70s and 80s when you're you know your cars are lined up off the highway trying to get in the facility you know those things resonate with me and while as i said before you know i'm not sure we can get to that point again but we're sure going to give it a valiant effort to to really bring this thing back to its iconic state that that it deserves well it's super exciting i, I tell you you have an interesting background so how did you come to say that how can we have confidence to know that oh this is this uh kevin is going to come and, and he's bought this louisiana down something that's it's iconic in our area um but you have a really interesting background could you tell us a little bit about how you got from chicago to louisiana and and now our our beloved louisiana downs yeah you know great story obviously uh growing up on the south side of chicago um funny enough i i used to go to the race tracks back there with my parents and my dad you know Arlington and Belmoral and all those tracks and so kind of coming full circle you know fast forward you know many many years um, and, and now have the opportunity to sort of bring this track back to life again but yeah you know started as an intern back in uh, in school um, you know with Harris uh, casinos which which was their first riverboat operation in Joliet Illinois uh, many of which you know it's known for the the, the prison out there in the Blues Brothers uh, Joliet but uh, <laughs> Um, you know, did an internship well, with Harris. Say no more. You definitely <laughs> right. are ready to be right here in Bossier City. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but spent four years at the property level in all various departments, then went uh, four years at the corporate office with uh, Harris overseeing, you know, seven other 14 properties at the time. Was involved in several different acquisitions and new builds because that was a great time to be in the gaming industry when it was really, really getting going. So had a lot of great experience from that standpoint. Um, you know, started a, a gaming company in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, we we built three uh, fabulous casinos out there in, in in the in the Iowa area. Wait, 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 wait! Stop a minute! Stop a minute! Because I worked in Des Moines, Iowa for many years. I got married there. My daughter was born there. Were you at <laughs> yeah. the racetrack there in Des Moines? No, very close though. So it was called Wild Rose Entertainment, and it was owned by uh, my partner Gary Kirk and I. And uh, he was a big insurance guy in West Des Moines, and so we had. Sure, Kirk Casinos Van Horsdale Insurance, of course. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gary, Gary was that guy uh, owes you uh, money. <laughs> Gary and I started together, and uh, we we built uh, this casino company called Wild Rose. And um, wow. So yeah, we spent seven years in 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 the Des Moines area. Had a great time, uh, and then uh, uh, you know started as, as Paul and I were talking yesterday. I went to Tropicana to be the COO to help uh, Tropicana through bankruptcy, which was a great experience, and then started <laughs> Premier. Um, and built our first casino, my first casino here in Natchez, Mississippi, which has just been, you know, 12 years of just, uh, of great, great things. So it's, so you, uh, it's you, been, own, it's the, you own the casino in Natchez, right? 
Yes, yeah. So mm -hmm. how, how did you go, you know, what brings you all the way down south uh, to Mississippi? What made you make that choice? Well, you know, when I was traveling with Harris for the seven casinos, you know, I had actually Shreveport was one of the casinos in Vicksburg. And so I would travel down here pretty often overseeing those uh, facilities. And so, you know, it's it's just a different feel. Obviously, you've got these, you know, coming growing up in the Midwest, you know, values, as they say, but you get down south and it's just, you know, depending on where you're at, you know, people just open their doors for you, you know, and the food's phenomenal and the people are friendly. And I just knew that if we could, um, you know, be successful in, in financing this venture down here in Natchez, that we could really do some amazing things. And and 12 years later, uh, talking to the mayor and some aldermen, they're just, you know, they're, they're can't believe the things that we've accomplished over the last 12 years. So it's been really, really good. And again, a lot of the things that we want to do in, in Bossier City to uh, more of a grassroots effort to be completely engaged with the community, uh, help and participate, be a great corporate citizen and, and just do the right things, you know? Well, I'm excited. A lot of people say that sort of thing, but knowing just in the few conversations we've had, I mean, this morning, right before you got on uh, on this podcast with us, what, what were you doing five minutes ago before you got on this podcast? Well, you know, part of... <laughs> You know, part of part of our. I'm not. Of our I'm not being invasive. I actually know what he did. I know this is this is. I'm going yeah, somewhere. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> but part part of part of our executive and in, in our culture here is is not only do we give monetarily, but we also give our time. And so our executives and myself uh, participate in a lot of different youth organizations. And uh, today was a, a eighth grade uh, back to school jam that uh, they asked me to speak at because we do a lot of things for the schools here in town. And so uh, it was great just to sort of see, you know, after doing this, these jams for the last six years, you kind of get to know these kids from when they were young until they're getting ready to graduate. And so it's it's real, it's real, uh, you know, emotional to see sort of where they've come and, and where they're going to go and then follow them and, and hopefully, you know, be sort of a mentor to, to a lot of these kids. And mm -hmm. again, as we talked about yesterday, I mean, you know, 12 years in a row now, we, we, we do a breakfast, breakfast with Santa with 75 to 125 foster kids every year and, and get them every single gift that they want. And, um, you know, we, we, we built a junior Olympic sized pool a couple of years ago, first pool in Natchez in 25 years. Um, and now there's uh, swim teams that have up to 45 kids on them that they would have never had that before. And so right. again, as you said earlier, you know, Natchez has never had a volleyball team. And as you know, volleyball is close to my heart with my girls. And so, I personally funded the entire volleyball program wow. here in Natchez last year. So um, listen, volleyball is, uh, I love volleyball. That's one of my, I'm an old sports guy, so that's uh, that's yeah. one of my favorite sports. Karch Karai and Steve Timmons are two of my favorite athletes of all time. I had the uh, privilege of meeting and uh, meeting both, talking to them both. Uh, one was a formal television interview. The other one was the... Uh, walking on the beach in Maui, which was weird, but I ran wow. into Steve Timmons there and talked yeah. to him. I know you know who those guys are, oh, yeah. and uh, yeah. I love volleyball. So tell me about your involvement with that sport and uh, starting the leagues with your daughter. Well, you know, both my daughters played, uh, but my youngest, uh, she was Gatorade Player of the Year this year, this past year, uh, ranked 19th in the country. Wow. She's actually the first year at Oklahoma. She decided to go to Oklahoma this year. And so awesome. they've yeah. got their uh, first uh, game this weekend, which we'll be going to. Um, and Kevin Friday, didn't pay us or, or prompt us at all to talk about that so he could brag about his daughter. <laughs> but that's what yeah. dads do. Yeah, we keep bragging right. a little. Heck, no, but do, but do keep right. bragging. That's awesome. So you're on your way to Norman because she's playing a tournament? Yeah, she's playing a tournament this week in the first tournament, first game. So they had an exhibition game last week in Fort Smith, Arkansas, which went great. And she played phenomenal. And so, uh, knock on wood, hopefully everything here continues. But yeah, I mean, she played in the USA League. So when you talk about Karch, I mean, what a great guy. I got to meet him a couple times. Yeah. And um, the year she played two years ago, they, they won gold in the USA division, beating wow. Brazil. So she had a great, so she's already had a really great uh, career, but um, looking forward to this weekend and, and playing. And, and like I said, you know, when the, when the team, when, when the school here wanted to do volleyball and uh, they had no funds to do it, um, you know, I personally financed the entire thing. All the kids got new wow. shoes, nets. I actually flew my daughter and her coaches in for uh, a camp for a weekend so the coaches would sort of get an idea of mm -hmm. how to process and go through that. So it was really good. I mean, that, that is awesome stuff. I mean, uh, I don't want to put you on the spot or anything, but is there, uh, you'll be looking to do similar type things or, around the uh, Shreveport community? 
Absolutely. And that's, and that's what we talked about yesterday. I mean, that's what we really do is, is when we come in as an sort of an individual owner, not really a corporate entity is, you know, we really try to do a grassroots effort of sort of, you know, finding our space in the community that, that we can help with, whether it's, you know, and we, 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 we like to focus on the youth aspect of it. Um, but, you know, if there's other things that are needed, whether it's um, fire, police, health, safety, you know, we really focus on those things too. We, you know, we bought body cameras for our sheriff's department, computers for our city of, city of Natchez police cars. I mean, it's endless what we've been able to do over the course of the last 12 years. And, and that's what we want to bring to, to Bozier because that's how we operate. We're not just there you know, with a business and four walls that, you know, uh, is is taking advantage of the citizens. We, we really want to be a part of the community and, and do what we can to, to play our part to make sure that we're doing the right thing all yeah. the time. And that's what's important, you know. Yeah, so and, 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 yeah, everyone has my cell number, you know, and sometimes <laughs> that's good, sometimes that's bad. But, you know, I'm, I'm very accessible. And, you know, when when decisions are needed and and and, and whether it's monetarily or whether it's other things you know typically as you guys know when you go when you go to a corporate office sometimes you got to wait months and go through seven different people and then you get a no and you know really it's just one call and uh you can you give know, us a no on the first call so i appreciate that <laughs> Yeah. Listen, I, I, I find all of this yeah. to be fascinating, to be honest with you. I think it's fantastic yeah. stuff. It's an incredible attitude that you're coming into uh, right. Boulder City with, and I'm, I'm sure you're, uh, people are going to really be glad uh, that you're coming to town. Yeah. 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 No, we're, very, we're, we're really, really excited. I think it's a different, uh, it's definitely a different aspect uh, managing, obviously, you know, doing casinos and, and hotels my entire life, and then coming into the racing side of it with, you know the horsemen and everything else you know it's a different if it, it's a different animal no pun intended but you know <laughs> we, we just want to make sure again if you can communicate well and mm -hmm. uh and make sure that you're doing the right thing you know that's really all that matters at the end of the day and there's always sure. going to be someone or people that you know disagree but you know if you if you stay the line i think it's always uh and, and you're true to what you believe that's that's what's important so well i like what you said at the very beginning that that you were interested in louisiana downs because you already saw the good workforce there, the long-term employees, you know, you're expected to continue working with the same group that you already have. What are some things, some improvement that you're planning on making to Louisiana Downs? Because horse racing here, you know, has lost a little bit of its uh, popularity in this area. I know in Hot Springs and some other areas, it's still doing pretty well. Uh, what are some things you're gonna do at the Downs to, to really bring folks back and to make it a great a a um, asset to, uh, to our area? Well, you know, I think two things. One is, is, is you know, when I first visited, you could really see there's there was a separation of casino and racing, and so we've been able now to continue to forge that together, where it's just one team. And and I think that's what's important is, you know, there was always this separation of casino and, and racing, and so now we've been able to bring that together. And you know, the second part is, you know, the the, the previous owner just never put any capital into the racing side, and so you know, coming into this, you know, we repaired barns and we repainted things and you know we remodeled our test barns and remodeled the kitchens for the jockeys which they're they so appreciate and <laughs> you know we did all the tote boards and and uh you know all the landscaping around both the the front side and back side of the of the uh facility um so mm -hmm. really putting capital on both sides i think is important and that's where i think they see the value of what we're trying to do but you know ultimately you know, Paul, as we talked about yesterday, the, the biggest thing for us in order to be successful is is to increase the purses. And there's only a couple ways of doing that. One is, you know, slot revenue, which is important. Um, the HHR machines, which they just recently passed, and we just opened up our first OTB last Thursday in Mound, Louisiana. So it has the off-track betting as well as 50 um, HHR machines. Right now we have 27 in there. We're, we're waiting for the delivery on the others to, to make up the 50. Oh, what's HHR um, machine? Yeah, I don't know. So so, explain that. So HHR machines effectively are basically, they look exactly like a slot machine, but the way that the outcome is figured is through historic race racing events that occurred previously. I know it sounds ridiculous, but that's what happens mm -hmm. and that's, that's what they do. And so for all practical matters, uh, you know, they, they look, feel and, uh, you know, play just like a slot machine. And so we're, we have the ability to, as long as you're within 55 miles of your track, you can have five of these uh, HHR OTB facilities. And so we opened up one. We're getting ready to do four more. We submitted our applications 
two weeks ago to the Racing Commission on, on other areas that uh, we would like to put these. And so, you know, that's one of the ways we need to do it. And, and Paul, as you and I talked about yesterday, you know, we inherited a facility that had 20, 25 year old slot machines that you know, many were down and we couldn't even get parts for anymore because they just don't make them. And so right. um, over the course of the next 30, 45 days, we'll have well over 100 new slot machines on the floor, which would be great. So changing out the old, bringing in the new, um, the um, they closed the restaurants here. They only had a Fuddruckers, which we talked about another you know the burger place and so nothing you know, wrong we're... with the burger place we always talk about that <laughs> nothing wrong nothing no, wrong no, with the burger nothing place wrong. <laughs> nothing wrong with you and i talked about that i'm a burger guy but, but you're uh, but you're bringing in some new restaurants you said or you're, you're reopening and bringing in new new restaurants yeah so we started remodeling last week of our of all the restaurant facilities so we'll have a, a coffee shop slash uh sort of pastry area called brew b-r-e-w so it's a uh, you know, coffee in beer depending on what time of the day it is sometimes you want a beer at seven sometimes you want a beer at seven at night so but uh, it's called brew and then um we have an off we have no a sports judge. Book. breakfast with, beer with breakfast is good so it's brew is kind yeah. of a play on your word you got your brewed coffee but then you also have your uh your brew yeah you know what i'm saying that's right that's right so and then we have uh, a sports book bar and grill uh similar to what we did here in natchez which is going to be fantastic um, and then, you know, obviously our sports book, but, uh, and then we're bringing in, uh, DeLuca's, uh, pizza from, uh, Hot Springs, which, uh, is well known out there. If you go to Oak Lawn, everybody knows the DeLuca's and so they'll be coming in as well. So we're really excited about that. We started our concert series inside the casino, uh, a couple weeks ago. So that'll be every weekend live entertainment, which sort of adds just a little bit of what of a wow factor to the floor, mm -hmm. um, uh, new slot chairs. So it just... You know all of the it and, so you said and a, back a concert you said a concert series are you going to have concerts every weekend or every month or so there's live bands every weekend and then and then you know once every quarter we'll do sort of a big event with uh with a major you know act uh okay. you know at the, at the casino which will be nice to bring folks in um so yeah so it's it's just you know we we a lot of the things, as you and I talked about yesterday, you mm -hmm. can't see because obviously, you know, all the IT infrastructure and slot systems and new computers that, you know, were, were desperately needed, mm -hmm. um, you know, re replaced all that stuff, what? new wiring through the whole casino and, and, and racetrack. So it, it's been it's been an, an uphill, but especially when, you know, as you guys know, you know, it's just like a house, you know, you don't put any money into it for 15 years, there's going to be a lot of things that you got to take care of and fix. And so this right. is- the, You've been to Jeff's it, house, I see. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, you, you mentioned the, the uh, sports book. Uh, I'm assuming that's gonna be for more than just horse racing. That's a new thing going on in Louisiana now. It was just legalized and we're the state's just getting into it full bore, I guess, this fall. So yep. um, I, I would imagine that'll be a big revenue generator for the uh, the track. It will. And, you know, we opened up last October the, the temporary sports book uh, and it's done real well. But, uh, you know, we're looking forward to getting these restaurants and the official permanent sports book open here in the next 30, 60 days. And I think, you know, we missed football season last year. So that was a big, you know, uh, unfortunate situation for us. But this, it was just a timing of when we when we got licensed. And so this year we'll have, you know, full football season, both NFL and, and college, which is great. And that's a big driver. Obviously, we know we, I've had it down here in Natchez for three years now and, and going on four and Sportsbook uh, does phenomenal for us down here. And, and so, um, you know, we're really looking forward to getting our feet under us and, and really getting something that people are going to come watch and enjoy. All the furniture is already at the facility, just waiting for the mm -hmm. construction to be done. And uh, it's going to be a place where you're going to really enjoy going and, and watching a game. If, so if people can come, come in. in and people can come in, watch the games, bet on the games. Eat the yep. eat the pizza pasta and then and, 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 and bet on the horses yeah. and bet on the games yeah. and absolutely uh, so, uh, it, it's kind of like a try watch the games yeah well, it yeah. sounds like a fun time to me it's going to yeah. be a total experience right right absolutely absolutely and and it's uh it's great and you know as we talked about yesterday I mean you know Bozier is such a great area where we're located is fantastic you know as we talked about that new interchange is going to be opening up soon which you know, leads right into Barksdale and, you know, everything's sort of moving that way. So we really need to make sure that we, you know, really dust this thing off and make it shine because we, we want to be a, a really great asset in that community. And then it's neat. It's, it's something that I think is, is long overdue. And, and so we really want to make sure we, we put our best foot forward. Getting into why I think, you know, as you guys talked earlier about the Super Derby, why we, we decided to postpone it. And 
you know, we, we effectively took over the property in November. Um, we did have a shared services agreement with Caesars through February. Um, so we really kind of took over in February this this facility. And so, you know, this Super Derby, as I continued to look into it and let's listen to the horsemen and everyone else, I mean, it is a very, very important event. And, you know, seeing that Sportsbook just passed, these HHR machines just passed, we have new slot product on the floor now, all those things, you know, uh, contribute to, to the purses. And, uh, you know, it, it would be foolish for me to come in and try to do a Super Derby at a, at a low purse and look like an idiot. And mm -hmm. instead of just taking a step back, let all this stuff that we're doing, all these positive things with the HHR, the OTBs, the sports book, the new slot product, let it mature, let it get going. And next year, you know, we can have, you know, these purses at, at you know, what I would hope is going to be, you know, great levels. And, and then we can do a really, really good super derby where we're all engaged and we can really get the marketing behind it and have a full year of of really focusing and our efforts on this thing. So to 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 increase the purse, which is the prize money, I'm assuming that's what that means. I'm not a yeah. real big. Yeah, that's what it means. Is that good, what that you means? Got a good one, Paul. Um, <laughs> I'm picking up. I'm picking up what you what you're putting down. So, yeah. uh, but a percentage of of all the receipts from from the slot machines, the H H R H H H H R H H R, the all, all the betting that happens, a percentage of that goes into the purses, and that increases you know the prize money for the for the horse racing, and that'll bring more um, you know it'll be more attractive. For your for your bigger name horses to come in and that could that could help you really get this the super derby back going absolutely yeah correct? and there, there's a lot of there's a lot of different facets of how it comes in obviously it's, it's a percentage of your slot revenue the hhi revenue you know the ot off-track betting revenue uh the video poker at the truck stops there's a percentage that comes in back to the racing industry for purse increases so there's you know, there, there's several different factors that contribute to the purses and so you know again we feel that you know if we can just you know, get some of these newer things in that are going to generate, you know, some additional revenue for us. Yeah. We'll, we'll be in a much better position next year to, to really showcase this event. Well, look, it sounds like there's a lot of moving parts to this entire uh, operation. I want to talk to you a little bit about the horse racing itself. And I know that uh, there was this within the last couple of months, there was this thing called HISA, stood for Horse Racing Integrity Safety Authority. I believe that's what it was. And it, it appeared to be an attempt by a group somewhere to nationalize horse racing and take it over, even though horse racing has typically been uh, a, a state-governed uh, uh, event, but state by state. And there was a, it seemed like there was a lot of pushback. There was people from your track, Louisiana Downs, that contacted me that were very concerned about it. One was uh, a wife of a trainer out there. Uh, and uh, the Louisiana Attorney General, Jeff Landry, uh, led a fight against this, filed a lawsuit, and won. Um, and so it looks like HISA is not going to be around, but uh, can you kind of enlighten us about what this was all about? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, you know, what it comes down to is the health and safety of the horses. And, and you know, obviously, we have a phenomenal track, one of the best tracks around. That's why a lot of people come to us. They may not race there, but they train at our track because it's safe. It's The surface is fantastic. Um, but again, yeah, I mean, all the, the you know, the, the, the doping aspect, everything else that goes on on the, uh, you know, from a racing industry, not necessarily, obviously, at Louisiana Downs, but just in general, I think there was a there was a push to have his come out and sort of operate and oversee and, and, and manage that aspect of the racing industry. As you said, you know, earlier, Jeff Landry sort of, you know, put a stop to that. Um, but ultimately, I mean, when it comes down to it, you know, each track and each track owner has to be responsible for making sure that the jockeys, horses, the people that are racing at your facility, you know, are always doing things, you know, at the top level and, and not, you know, trying to cut corners and whatnot. And, and so I think that's where, you know, they're looking at some of the other areas that and tracks that may not be doing some of the the, the things that we do to make sure that, that the health and safety of the horses and jockeys are, are, for, are at the forefront. Okay. Yeah, de definitely got to keep safety always at the forefront. And yeah. I'm interested in how these jockeys and horses travel around. I mean, are they are they like uh, NBA players or baseball? Do they go from track to track? Do they tend to settle in one track, or how, how does all of that work? They do, because you know, obviously, every track has different schedules and timing, and and, and you know, different events. And so, yeah, they definitely the, the Louisiana 
horses definitely travel around to each of the tracks within the uh, within the state, and uh, you know, uh, like you said, you know, get get the trailers out, and, and and they're there one week, and they might not be there the next week, and so you know, and all, and all that is managed through our racing office as far as you know what horses are there, what horses are not there, that you know they got to be accounted for. But, uh, but yeah, you're right, you know, depending on what races are going on. And, and again, as we talked about earlier, the purse levels, uh, the trainers and the owners will, will move horses depending on where the races are that they feel that they could, you know, benefit from and, and, and have good and successful races at. So. And I'm sure you've had a lot of conversations with uh, all the racing people. I'm, I, I would imagine they're kind of excited about what you're doing at Louisiana Downs. Yeah, you know, I, I really do think so. And, and again, you know, when, when we when we came into this, one of the things that they said from the beginning, and this is the horsemen at the at the track level, is that we just want a voice and we want a seat at the table. And, you know, we meet with them every month and, and we go through concerns and thoughts and questions and get their input uh, and discuss, just like we did with the Super Derby. They actually were at the table and said, yeah, we agree. We, we let's, let's hold it off and let's do it next year. And so we, you know, in order to, I think to be successful, you gotta you gotta make some of these decisions as a team and as a group, and 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 make people feel like you know they're they're accountable as well for for what's going on and feel important, you know, feel part of the process. And uh, in order to uh, you know change and and create change from a culture standpoint and everything else, I think it's important. You can't just do it by yourself. And so, you know, we truly believe that that getting everybody involved and you know having you know a seat at the table is really important and so that's why we do these meetings with them every month and and again uh you know we we, we seriously consider everything that they're saying uh listen i've known you for about the 35 minutes or whatever it is and i i like you already <laughs> i like the i like your management style and the way you seem to approach things uh mm -hmm. i applaud you for this uh inclusiveness yeah. that you have among all the moving pieces out at your uh your track no i appreciate that yeah and, and, and you know i think you know when you when you go into a business you you want to feel it and i think what we try to do is make sure when you come in whether it's natchez whether it's louisiana downs that you know you're always treated with a smile with a friendly you know handshake or hug or whatever the, whatever it is i mean it's you know you got to feel that comfort and and you know it, for us it's a little bit different because you know you're you know nine times out of ten you may be leaving with less than you came with and so <laughs> if you can feel good give that person a hug you know shake a hand mm -hmm. smile know about their kids know about their grandkids i mean those are the things that we really try to do is is get to know our customers get to know our our team members obviously are, are critical in what we're trying to do and so it, it, you have to create the culture in order to be successful so and also part of the overall experience, you're talking about the friendliness out there. I'm, I'm excited about the new restaurants coming. We go out, I'm, I'm not a big horse race fan, but my family is, my, my, my brother and my mom and my dad. So every year, at least for Father's Day, we go out to the track and um, we have meals out there, but I'm excited that you're gonna have restaurants and um, <laughs> the opportunity, hold on, we're gonna pause. Um, Sorry about that. Thought I was on uh, <laughs> mute. But so when people come out now, um, what is the experience? I'm also I'm excited about coming to watch some football games though, because I definitely do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what can there's we still have a month to go in the season, right? When does the season end up? So, so end of September. End of September. End of September for racing. Yep. So mm -hmm. what can we expect? Uh, if we come out now, I know you've just taken over. It was, it was probably, it was a year long process to buy the business. And since you've been in, you've been doing some sprucing up, but what can people expect to find if they come out this month? Is there any notable improvements or, or what is the experience gonna be if we come out and, and we wanna get out there before the end of this season at the end of September? Yeah, again, I think I think on the weekends, you know, the live entertainment inside the casino, I think, uh, you know, we started doing buffets up on the fourth floor. So as you're watching the races, you know, first time in a very long time, you can actually sit down right up against the window, have a fantastic meal and watch the races. So that's that's always important. So, you know, that that's really sort of where we're at at, at the tail end of this uh, this season. Uh, but again, I think next year, you know, again, talking about doing sort of a smaller jazz fest in the middle of the infield uh after some races you know or, or during the mm, downtime of the racing season which would be great and so you know we got a lot of things on the chalkboard so to speak that uh we really want to get moving for next year and and then you know this year for me you know specifically was was truly just a learning experience of 
the ins and outs and, and, and meeting the horsemen and, you know, sort of just really getting an understanding of, of, of the processes that, that go along at the track and, and the differences of, you know, um, the casino side and the racing side and just making sure that we could, you know, really put our best foot forward. All right. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to it. As I said before, I, I just really, I'm impressed by the way you're approaching this whole thing. It's kind of a holistic mm -hmm. approach to running a racetrack, isn't it? It really is. I mean, you know, it's probably a little bit different. I think that, uh, you know, you, you, you take some learned experiences over the years. And, and I think ultimately, as you guys both know, what it comes down to is the people. You know what I mean? No, no matter what it is, the racing side of it, the casino side of it, the, the customer aspect of it, our vendors that have been fantastic, it really comes down to the people and the relationships. And if you can sort of, you know, merge those together, uh, let people know that you care regardless, you know, sometimes it's a no, right? But if, if you know that you, if they know that you care and it's a no, it's a lot better than just, you know, the opposite. And so I think, you know, what we're really trying to do is, again, create something special there. You know, it, it the, the property deserves it. It's It's been neglected for a long time. And so, you know, with that, it takes a little bit of time to get it going. And that's why I, I've been telling people, you know, just give me a year and let, let me, let me get these things rolling. And I, and I, I can, I can promise you that we're going to do the right thing. So, um, you know, we're, we, we're, we're, seven months into it so you know we're, we're i think we're we're where we need to be right now all right uh we're just about done i think we've been going a little over uh 30 minutes now but uh, i do want to ask you one last question your uh, your daughter's obviously deeply involved in volleyball and you've sponsored swim teams and volleyball teams etc um uh, is the whole family supporting this effort because obviously sports is important in your family it is listen you know my wife and the girls uh They've been to uh, probably 10 races already this year, you know, and they love it. Uh, Taylor and Kylie, my daughters, you know, they've been at the, in the barns and hanging out with the horses. And, you know, it's it's been it's been a great situation. I think it, uh, it's one that, you know, I think regardless of what you're doing, you know, you can be successful, but having your family behind you is, is critically important. Very good. Well, with that, I think we'll wrap this up. Kevin, thanks for being with us. We really appreciate it. Uh, you were a, a wealth of knowledge, and I, I, I'm impressed with the way that you're uh, approaching the management of Louisiana Downs, aren't you? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think, um, like you said, people are wondering what you're going to be doing. Well, we'll just have to come out and see. But I think that, that the action and the progress is going to be the determiner of how successful you really are. And I'm excited to see how it goes. We'll, we'll be back out this year with my dad, and then next year, really want yeah. to come and see what's going on so absolutely good job. well i mean thanks listen, for being I, on I, no i appreciate you guys and i was going to say I, I appreciate not being there in person but you know i'll be in next week and you know obviously you know would love to get together with you guys in person and i know uh, you had like, to speak to the eighth graders we get it <laughs> yeah. a lot more fun than yeah. jeff and i for sure yeah. well look yeah we'll get together with you that'd be uh, great that would We'd be enjoy awesome. that thanks kevin kevin preston the new owner of louisiana downs doing some great things out there really really appreciate thanks, it guys. thanks again mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And thank you for uh, joining us for this podcast. Good to know Shreveport Bossier brought to you by the Committee of 100 and KTBS TV. Remember, tell your friends and colleagues about the podcast and we'll have new content every other Wednesday morning. For more information, you can check us out at goodtoknowsb.com. So have a good day. Let's all continue to make Shreveport Bossier the best it can be. And that is good to know.